May the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O God, my rock and my redeemer. <laughs> Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the wages of sin we all know is death. And so when the widow of Zarephath saw that her beloved son, her only son, had died, she cries out to Elijah, Have you come to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son? And when the son of the widow of Nain saw that her only beloved son had died and she had no one left, she cried out, to the Lord, her heart weeped and wailed at this bitter payment. Sin is like this. Scripture tells us that the wages of sin are death, and we know it to be true. But like that annoying telemarketer salesman, sin is always saying, wait, there's more. Not only will sin affect you, it will affect your loved ones. Not only will it affect your loved ones, it will affect their loved ones. Not only will sin kill you, it will kill your loved ones. Not only will sin make you a widow, it will make you childless. You see what a harsh taskmaster sin is? Sin is always certain to pay its wages sixtyfold. And you all know in your lives, you've seen and experienced the wages of sin being paid a little bit at a time as each and every day you wake up with perhaps a new ache or a new pain, a new worry, a new anxiety that is burdening your heart. Sin is certainly faithful at paying what we're owed. And it is in this reality that our Lord Jesus Christ steps in. He sees the widow weeping for her beloved son. He sees the funeral procession carrying the bier of this, her last hope on earth. Her son who would take care of her in her old age. He sees this and our Lord Jesus Christ has compassion. Something that he is only able to do perfectly. He has compassion so much so that he is moved to the very core of his being for this woman. And for her son who has been paid fully for his sins. Our Lord has compassion and says to her, do not weep. And sin is right there saying, but wait, there's more. This man tells you not to weep. Why should you not weep? You've lost your husband. You've lost your son. What else is there for you? Sin is right there saying, but wait, there's more. You also will die. This poor widow, burdened with the reality of sin, burdened with that weight, paid to the fullest, by this harsh and unrelenting taskmaster of sin. But our Lord Jesus Christ is greater than any sin. Our Lord Jesus Christ is a far better Savior than we are sinners. And when he says to this woman, do not weep, he silences all the fears and anxieties. He shuts sin up. And he even confronts death itself. He goes and touches the bier, and the bearer stood still, and he said, Young man, I say to you, arise and wonder of wonders. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. And then Jesus went on his way. The people recognized him as a great prophet. They even say, God has visited his people. But Jesus continues to minister to other people, and sin creeps back in saying, wait, there's more. The mother who had lost her son and then received him begins to realize that she will endure this pain again for her son will die again. She realizes that she will endure the pain, the wages of sin as she continues to grow older, as she continues 
to waste away in her body and see everyone around her that she loves wasting away in their bodies. She begins to fret. She begins to get anxious. She wonders what the point of our Lord's compassion was if sin is only going to come back and pay double now to her. But God has visited His people. They all recognize this. Our Lord Jesus Christ is not merely a great prophet. He's not some good teacher or a wise man. He is God in the flesh. And God has visited His people. And this is our hope and our comfort against sin and death and hell itself. That we may stand up saying, God has visited me. God has come to me. This day, beloved, God has come to you saying, do not weep over your sins. Do not weep over the wages that are bitterly paid to you. Rejoice, for I am here amongst you. And that death that you will endure, those deaths that you have endured, that pain, that suffering, that loss, all the trials and temptations of your life will be as nothing, for God has visited you. Beloved in Christ, all of your sins, which would make you scarlet as blood, have been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And you are now whiter than snow for the sake of His mercy, for the sake of His righteousness, for the sake of His love. Christ, who has died on the cross for you, will not leave you or forsake you. And He did not leave this widow of name. But continue. Continued to minister to her the Holy Spirit, strengthening her with the truth of God's Word. She no doubt would have heard later what would happen to this rabbi who, rose, who raised her own son from the dead. She would have no doubt have heard about his own bitter sufferings and death upon the cross. She would have no doubt have heard about his glorious resurrection. And in the truth of God's Word, she would have been comforted. To know that death no longer has a hold on her. Death no longer has a hold on her son. Death no longer has a hold on her husband who had died. Death has been vanquished. Death has been conquered. Sin has been paid by the blood of Jesus Christ. And so let sin take its meager wages from you. Let sin pay you for a small time with this death that is nothing more than a rest in the grave for you have been washed in the blood of Christ. He has stretched himself out upon you. He has stretched himself out upon the cross that you might not die but live and recount the works of the Lord. That you who were once children of wrath may now be called children of the Heavenly Father for the sake of Jesus Christ. He has had compassion on you, beloved. He has called you his own beloved. No longer do you have to pay the wages of sin, for Christ has paid it abundantly. And this death that each one of us faces is nothing in Christ. And so keep your eyes focused clearly upon Jesus Christ. Cling to that cross and rejoice that His salvation is sure and certain and nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Savior. Nothing shall separate you from that great and amazing love. Nothing shall tear you away, not even death, from His nail-scarred hands. For there upon those nail-scarred hands your name has been written with His precious blood. Do not disbelieve, but believe, O oh sinner, that Christ has accomplished your salvation. That Christ, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, will never leave you nor forsake you. But behold, He is with you always. Rejoice, O oh beloved, that you may say this day, God has visited His for he certainly has. He has visited us. Our weeping has ceased. Our souls rejoice.
to see the salvation of our God, which is given us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.